Hi, good morning. Huh? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hi, good morning. My name is Ryue Nishizawa. Thank you for giving me the, this great opportunity to present my idea today. Today, first, I would like to talk about uh, a few points of uh, Japanese architecture and a Japanese city. Uh, where is the slide? Is the presentation coming? Yes. It's here only. Uh, there. Here. Yes. On the side. Oh. Uh, this is uh, this is a uh, famous uh, paintings of Kyoto city in uh, 18th century. And then I thought this is uh, one of the most uh, important painting to describe how Japanese architecture and the city looks like. There are many interesting points in this paintings, but especially today I would like to talk about uh, two main points. I especially feel interesting. Uh, First thing is this is a, a center is a city center, and then on the left, it's uh, out of the city. But uh, you don't see where is the center, where is the periphery. This looks like uh, everywhere looks center, or there is no concept of center. And the second thing that I feel interesting is that uh, these painters draw, paint so many uh, nature in the city, such as a cloud, a trees, animal, and the river. They, it seems like uh, nature and the city really together. This two point is, uh, I feel, uh, interesting to mention. This is uh, one of the most beautiful perspective, uh, beautiful paintings by uh, uh, Boulet, uh, French art architect. This is painted, uh, this is made in the same century, which is 18th century. I love this painting because uh, it's uh, drawn with a special technique called uh, uh, perspective with one viewpoint. Here you see the really strong uh, one center in the middle of the paintings. This is uh, uh, this has a character that the uh, object in the middle of the paint uh, middle of the paintings has a really right proportion. But uh, as you go go to the side, the proportion of the objects deformed. But uh, this, paint, this artist used the ax axonometric uh, way to draw the world. This has another advantage that the center and the periphery everywhere, the objects can be deformed evenly. So in other words, there is no center, or there are many center in the paintings. And this is a theater, a cultural center project that uh, we, Sejima-san and I, did together uh, during the 90, uh, 90s. This is, uh, we try to create a really democratic uh, architecture where the, you can see the, we have a theater on the right above. Uh, we have a meeting, a meeting room on the left below. There are many rooms, so many people doing something different all at once. This is uh, like everybody, everywhere can be the center. Everybody works, enjoy, totally in a democratic way. This is another example of housing to try to create uh, this, how to say, polycentrism architecture. 
And this is uh, another example of the housing that uh, uh, architecture and the nature really mixture together in the middle of the Tokyo. This is another example of a museum that we made in uh, 2004. This is a museum, but uh, you don't, the, there's no main entrance, so many entrances, and uh, you can do the exhibition with only three boxes, or you can do the 13 boxes, use, you can use 13 boxes for the big exhibition. Like, depend on the program, center position moves. And this is, uh, I'm talk, I want to like to talk a little bit about the relation with the nature and the architecture. The sketch above is uh, China. The architecture always stand on the bigger continent. So they first make a podium and then build architecture. It's really monumental. But below, this is Japan. The more than 90% of the property is occupied by the mountain. So we have uh, ocean just in front, and we have the mountain in the, in the back, behind, so that there's no place for us to build architecture. That's why we start thinking how nature and the architecture should stay together. We can't, uh, how to say, keep ourselves away from the nature. This is one of the ex uh, most beautiful examples about uh, nature architecture. This architect built a uh, temple on the border between land and the ocean, and there's a tide. And sometimes uh, water come around the temple, sometimes uh, it become ground. This is an example of how we can create architecture in the nature. Anyway, the, our, one of our tradition is that the architecture always come together with the nature. This is uh, one of the uh, uh, most famous temple in Kyoto. And the uh, relation with the architecture and the nature can be recognized, especially when you come approach to the architecture. This is a very famous temple in Nara. First, uh, you find roof when you are outside of architecture. And as you come close to architecture, at some point, which is B, you don't see the roof, but you find the ceiling of the eaves. And at this point, you enter the architecture area, but you are still outside of the roof. And then finally, you enter the, under the eaves and then inside the building. There are many uh, collection of the spaces between inside and outside. In the Western architecture, inside and outside, outside is uh, made with only one wall. It's really strong definition to create a city and architecture. But in Japan, there are many gradual changes of space between landscape and architecture. Move. Oh. Oh. The architecture always uh, try to stay with the nature, with the keeping the really close relation. This museum, the architecture is deformed because of, of the surrounding situation. And the people walk through the woods. First they experience the landscape, landscape and then they finally enter the museum, but there's no door. There's a really continuity between inside and outside. And this architecture doesn't have the entrance uh, gate on the facade, but uh, they first enter the open space below the architecture, and then they come to the patio, which is C, and then enter inside. There are like uh, scenery changes between the outside and inside. And the inside, so many center happening inside. This, this is a famous temple. This architect did uh, very interesting things. On the left, 
he opened up the doors like this to create a very mini ceiling on the left. And then he built column outside of the Engawa space. And then eaves create space outside. And the garden, and beyond the fence of the garden, there's real nature. This one, like uh, buffer zone, Arch Japanese architecture have uh, many layer of buffer zone around this. This is the sketch to describe this. The left diagram tells architecture creates space inside, but the right, right drawing says architecture creates space not only inside, but also outside. Like uh, space is bigger than architecture. This means architecture become uh, environment. And this is one of the example to show this uh, situation. There is no clear facade. There is no clear border between outside and inside. And this is uh, one of the most important shrine in Japan which is called Ise Shrine. This shrine is create space outside because nobody can enter the architecture because uh, this is uh, the architecture for God. The people never go inside, but uh, everybody experience architecture. This buffer concept, idea of a buffer zone, gives the really close relation or continuity between nature and architecture. Thank you very much.